comment about the interaction between uh, gender and sporting discipline on the uh, adaptation of the left ventricle? Well, thank you very much, Barbara. I'm going to be talking about the effect of gender and sport on left ventricular adaptation, but as a background, I should start by telling you that people who exercise intensively for about four hours each week develop a constellation of structural and functional changes in the heart that permit the generation of a large stroke volume that's required to provide or deliver a sustained and increased um, cardiac output for prolonged periods. The factors that govern that are several, but age and type of sport play an important role about, uh, to, that influence the magnitude of these changes. We know that athletes who engage in endurance sport usually get very big cavities, uh, and athletes who engage in very static sports, such as weight training, uh, powerlifting, judo and wrestling, get more thickening of the muscles with a very small increase in LV cavity size. As far as sex is concerned, we know that males get bigger dimensions than females, but the amount of literature on females' heart is very scarce, and it's time to revisit the whole thing now, because females uh, constitute an increasing proportion of athletes that excel at the highest level. To give you some idea, uh, our Olympics a century ago consisted of only 4% of female athletes, but the London 2012 had nearly 45% of athletes that were female. Furthermore, many females are now engaging in sports that men excelled in, such as football, rugby, and even boxing. So it's well worth revisiting uh, the situation with females. So the aim of this study was to compare left ventricular geometry in male and female athletes in relation to the type of sport that they engaged in. And in this study, 1,083 white athletes were study, studied, which included 439 females, which is very sizable when we look at what's out there in the literature. These athletes in, were engaged in 40 different sports, which were divided into static, sort of the powerlifting type, dynamic, more sort of long distance running and cycling, or mixed, such as football, uh, rugby, and even rowing. All athletes underwent echocardiography, and the aim was to study the left ventricular geometry, which is governed, uh, which, is, which is determined by looking at the relative left ventricular wall thickness and the left ventricular mass. Uh, just for your, for your information, normal geometry equals a normal relative wall thickness and a normal left ventricular mass. Eccentric hypertrophy is when left ventricular mass is increased, but more due to the increase in the chamber size and concentric hypertrophy is when left ventricular mass is increased, but more due to the thickness of the ventricle rather than an increase in cavity size. And then there is this other entity called concentric remodeling where there is no increase in left ventricular mass, but there's a slight increase in the thickening of the left ventricle. And here are the results. Females were smaller than males. The proportion of athletes engaged in static dynamic and mixed component sport was the same in, amongst males and females. When we looked at the dimensions of the heart, uh, the heart females generally had smaller dimensions. And I want to now, this, this, this is not on the slide here, left ventricular cavities in females were smaller, but when you corrected them for their size, females had a slightly larger left ventricular cavity than males. Down the bottom here, is left ventricular geometry. The good news is that 70% of the athletes had a completely normal left ventricular geometry, but that did leave a similar proportion of athletes with abnormal left ventricular geometry, which can sometimes raise the possibility of a heart muscle disorder. If we looked at dynamic sports, uh, then females actually adapted by increasing their cavities more than males did. Amongst males, there was a greater increase in wall thickness, where, where by 16, 15% of males actually increased their heart size by causing a thickness uh, uh, in the heart muscle, 
This, this phenomenon was very uncommon in females and was only observed in 4% of females. Females, when they exercise, adapt by increasing their cavities rather than causing a thickness of their heart muscle. Here is a, a relationship between left ventricular wall thickness and, and, and left ventricular mass. And these red bars uh, basically are cutoffs for the relative wall thickness. Uh, and what this shows, in, in effect, is that a relative wall thickness of more than 0.48 does not occur in females. And that's an important point. Similarly, a left ventricular mass of more than 145 grams does not occur in a female. And these data could be very important in differentiating between physiology and pathology in females presenting with potential cardiac symptoms. So in conclusion, gender has an important effect on cardiac adaptation to exercise. The majority of athletes manifest normal left ventricular geometry. A proportion do exhibit abnormal geometry compared to the normal population. Concentric hypertrophy or remodeling uh, in males uh, is recognized, whereas females generally exhibit eccentric hypertrophy. By that I mean a big cavity, uh, but a very small increase in wall thickness. These differences are particularly evident in athletes engaged in dynamic sports. Females rarely show extreme dilatation of the left ventricular cavity size, but when you scale this, to their body size, they have a slightly larger ventricle than males. A relative wall thickness of more than 0.5 or an LV mass of more than 145 was not detected in any female, and this is important in differentiating between physiology and pathology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sanjay. Are there any questions on this presentation? Uh, Bruce Jansen, Cardiology News. Could you uh, speak a little bit about the clinical implications for sports screening and so forth? Yes, very much so. Um, sports screening is a controversial issue, uh, to, to say the least. But one thing we cannot get away from is that many large sporting organizations in Europe do implement mandatory screening. This includes the Football Association, the English Institute of Sport, the Lawn Tennis Association, Rugby Union, Rugby League, and thereby it's, it, it goes without doubt that females will be screened. The important point I want to make is that death in sport amongst females is extremely rare. The male to female ratio in de for death in competitive sport is 10 to 1, and amongst recreational athletes it's 20 to 1. But they still get screened. What, I'm, what we normally rely on is the absolute wall thickness, and we know that females very rarely get marked increase in absolute left ventricular wall thickness. But if we've got a female who's got a dodgy looking ECG, and we're looking at the echocardiogram, if we start looking at the left ventricular mass or the relative wall thickness, that may give us a better idea of whether a female is harboring a serious cardiac condition, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The current guidelines are that clearly that, that we would then have to study them in more detail with more detailed investigations such as an MRI scan and various other things. But if we did diagnose hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in any athlete, then the current guidelines suggest abstinence for, from intensive exercise because there is a risk between exercise and, and sudden death with this, with this particular condition. A question here? John Mandrola from the heart.org. Um, can you speculate as uh, when you look at the data on long term endurance exercise and arrhythmias, sudden death, as you mentioned, most of it uh, seems in, predominantly in males. Could this be a gender, could this be a protective, can you speculate on a mechanism of why females, is this a protective um, sort of uh, adaptation to exercise that females have? Well, that's, that's a very interesting point. Uh, we know that left ventricular hypertrophy is a predictor for arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death in individuals with cardiac disease. That's a well-known fact. 
Now, the fact that females don't develop this magnitude of hypertrophy as males may be that they're, so, they're kind of protected from arrhythmias, but the question is, why do males exhibit this type of remodeling compared to females? And there are several hypotheses. One is clearly that males have a higher concentration of testosterone, which is an anabolic hormone. It's a building block hormone, and that may allow them to de develop greater hypertrophy. And if we look at blood pressure responses during exercise, they're considerably higher in males than females, uh, and uh, I should be cautious how I put this, but males tend to push themselves way beyond females and ignore warning symptoms when they're running because of this macho image, and that may result in some of them losing their lives when they're competing. Got any other questions? <coughs> Sanjay. Hello. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't see it. Yeah. I'm Attila Burke uh, from Italy, Dr. News. And uh, I'm wondering, uh, two days ago, uh, we have been told that uh, a small and uh, thick ventric uh, ventricle can, uh, uh, can be a prognosis factor for uh, develop uh, uh, ventricular adaptation. So I'm wondering if in women, uh, women develops eccentric hypertrophy. Could this, uh, could this be the reason why they are much protected? Well, yes, I think we go back to this issue of uh, relative wall thickness in that women have a smaller relative wall thickness than females, what I, uh, than males, shall I say. I'm not sure why women develop predominantly eccentric hypertrophy, i.e. just big cavities. I suspect it's probably a, a hormonal thing and a blood pressure response thing. But there is no doubt that women certainly, a very few women die uh, during competitive events. And I can just give you some idea of the London Marathon. The London Marathon will, will basically take in its millionth runner this year. And in the million runs at the London Marathon, We've, in 35 years, we've only had one female death, and that female death was a drug-related death and not a cardiac death. How many males? 14. So can one uh, then look at left ventricular thickness in uh, women athletes as uh, a marker of uh, use of anabolic steroids? Excellent point. Uh, just to put this into context, when we look at left ventricular wall thickness measurements in people like you or I, our wall thickness measurements would range between 7 and 11 millimetres. If we look at female athletes, you don't see female athletes with a wall thickness of more than 11. The only exception is a very small proportion of black athletes, which this study didn't look at. A very small number of black females may get a wall thickness of 12 millimeters. So if you ever have a Caucasian female with a wall thickness of more than 11, who's not hypertensive and doesn't have a family history of cardiomyopathy, you should be concerned about anabolic steroids. But because most females don't actually get absolute increases in wall thickness, I believe that left ventricular geometry would be a better marker of pathological hypertrophy than absolute thickness. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.